Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are in the house of the Lord today. This is holy ground. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The word of God says that in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord this morning wherever you are. Let's begin to thank God for the gift of life. Father God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you today. With the fruit of our lips, we honor you. We ascribe greatness to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, you do great things. You do marvelous things. You do majestic things. You do excellent things. Father, we say thank you. Because you are our source, you are our shield, you are our rock, you are our banner. You are the dependable God, the faithful God, the righteous God, the holy God. Father, we honor you today with the fruit of our lips. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be upon my lips. Father God, this praise is for you. This worship is for you. The meditations of our hearts, it's for you, oh God. This service we present to you. This time in your presence, God, we do not take for granted. Because you are a mighty God. Father, no gathering is too small. No gathering is too big for you to show forth your mighty hand. Therefore, Lord, we await you, Lord. We await the move of the Holy Spirit in our service today. Holy Spirit, flow like a river in this place. Holy Spirit, flow like a river in this place. Move through our pews. Move through the airways. Move through our hearts. Lead us, guide us, direct us. Show us hidden mysteries in the word of God. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Now into your courts with praise on our lips, oh God. For all that you have done, Father, morning by morning, new mercies, new blessings, new miracles, new favor. Father, we are in awe of you. We don't know how you do it, but we know that you can. And we know that you will, oh God. Because you're a God who promises and never fails. Father, we say thank you for your promises, oh God. Thank you, Lord, because you've promised to always be with us. You've promised that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You've promised, oh God, that you would contend with those that contend against us. You've promised us that not one sick, not one feeble. Father, you've promised us that your grace is sufficient. It is more than enough for us. Father, you are more than enough for us. Father, you are more than enough for us. Today and forevermore. Thank you, God, because you are the Lord. You change it not. You never change. You never fail. You win our battles for us, oh God. Is there anything too hard for me? Say it, the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because all things are possible with you. Our God of possibilities in this year of God class exploits, we just lift up our lives before you. We say thank you, Lord, for the fourth man that will be with us through it all, in the fire, in the wilderness, wherever we may be, the fourth man is with us, oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this service. Father God, we just lift up our nation before you. We say thank you, Lord, for the peace of our land. We say thank you, Lord, for the unity in our land. We say thank you, Lord, for the prosperity of the United States of America. Father God, we say thank you, Lord, for turning things around in our nation. Thank you, Lord, for righteousness taking the first place. Your righteousness in our land. Thank you, Lord, because we are called by your name and we pray according to your holy word. And we speak life unto the United States of America. We speak healing upon the United States of America. 
Father God, we just lift up our leaders. Starting with President Joe Biden, we cover him with the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you for his life. Father, thank you for how you lead him. Thank you for how you guide him. Thank you, Lord, because he hears your voice. and He carries out your agenda for this land. Father, we say thank you, Lord, for his cabinet. Thank you, Lord, for surrounding him with wise counsel. Father, to you be all the glory. Father, the fact that we're still standing. Father, the fact that the economy hasn't crumbled, oh God, it is your doing. The fact that the borders are safe, oh God, it is your doing. Father, we trust in you, Lord Jesus. And we say thank you, Lord, for the United States of America. Father God, we say thank you, Lord, for blessings in this house. Father, we say thank you, Lord, for every need in this room and over the airwaves. Father, you are God who answers. You said before we call, you hear us. And when you hear, you answer, oh God. Father, we ask, oh Lord, for every need in the house. Brothers and sisters, bring up your needs before the Lord right now. Father, every need in this house, every spiritual need, every financial need, every mental need, whatever the need is, our God is more than able. Our God is more than enough, oh God. We give you praise. Father, once again, we give you this service, oh God. We ask that you move in a mighty way. We ask that you do that which only you can do in our lives. Father, we ask, oh God, that none of us will be the same. That we will encounter you as we worship. We will encounter you as we praise. We will encounter you as we pray. We will encounter you as we sit around your word. Father, it's all about you and your goodness. It's all about your name being glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. How many of us are excited to be here today? Amen. Can we put our hands together and give God praise? Hallelujah. Amen. It's great to be back in the house. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord. Put your hands together.
faithfulness. We give you praise, Lord. Turn it up.
glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's begin to worship God some more. Shine, Jesus. Let your light so shine. Shine, Jesus. Let your light shine. Shine upon our hearts. You reign. You are glorious. You reign. You are glorious. You reign supreme. Oh, Father, we stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you, oh God. We can never get tired of praising you. You are too good. You are too kind. You are too faithful. You are too righteous, oh God. Who are we that you are mindful of us, oh God? He said we should sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song, hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord, because in your time you make all things beautiful. In your time you make all things marvelous. How great thou art. Father God, this praise is for you. This praise is for you. Father, we want to be focused on nothing else but you. Nothing else but you. Nothing else but your face, oh God. In the midst of everything, oh God, we want to see your face. We want to behold your beauty today. Father, we give you praise and we honor you. Father, your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. Father, our praise has gone up. We know that you're here with us. Father God, we say thank you, Lord, for sending down the blessings, oh God. Blessings that will overwhelm us. Blessings of the God kind. Father, we received it today. Wherever we are, oh God, we receive it today. We receive your love. We receive your light. We receive your power. We receive your favor. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Welcome everyone to the house of the Lord this morning. It's just so good to be in the Lord's presence. Please be seated. I just want to welcome everybody. It's, we're looking at mid-April already. God is good. God is faithful. All the time. Amen. Just thank God for all that he has done. He's brought us this far. And he would not leave us. Amen. He would not forsake us. That is a promise from God. Amen. Our 2024 is still our year of God-class exploits and the year of the fourth man. I want to believe that you are all experiencing this in every area of your life. Continue to see wonders without numbers. God is awesome. God is awesome. And if you were in Ohio, in the Cleveland path this week, we saw what the Lord did. That was the Lord's doing. And it was marvelous in our eyes. And we'll forever be grateful for that. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the solar eclipse. Thank you, Lord, because you're a God who keeps your promises. Amen. I just want to thank um, those who are visiting with us, who are fellowshipping with us for the first time. If there's anyone who is here for the first time or who's worshiping with us online, just want to thank you for visiting our church, for spending time with us to, I mean, today. And we know that you will be richly blessed. Please join us live and connect with us. You can um, listen to our podcasts. We've got messages that go back so many years. Be blessed. You can visit our YouTube channel as well. And if you have a prayer request, please send it in. And also, you can download our publications. We have so many great books that could bless you, that will bless you, whereby you spend time in God's word. Amen. Amen. 
Now, this Wednesday at 8 p.m., it will be a time of ministry in the Word with our senior pastor, Reverend Kade Tadeshe. It's a one-hour time in God's presence whereby we dig into God's Word and we put God first. We give Him priority over our lives and we will be blessed. So please make it a date with the Lord at 8 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday as we spend some time um, in the Word of God. Amen. And we also will not forget the Word of God says we should continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So brothers and sisters, please continue to pray for Israel. Continue to pray for the nation of Israel. We're going to pray that there will be confusion in the camp of the enemy. And the Lord will bring a stop to the turmoil in that land. In the mighty name of Jesus. And also as we pray for Israel, let's remember our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Feels like it's been forever, but the Lord is still on the throne. Regardless of whatever happens, the Lord has a perfect plan. And the Lord's name will be glorified after all is said and done. So please pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel and in Ukraine. Amen. Amen. Now, it's a Titan offering. It's time for us to give unto the Lord. Offering time is blessing time. Offering time is always blessing time. Amen. And we have five ways by which we can give here at Abundant Life International Church Commission. So you can give in person, like for those in the room today. You can text. The number should be flashing on your screen. And also you can give via our website, via Zelle, as well as Cash App. Amen and amen. Now, as we prepare to give this morning, I'm um, just going to share a quick word of God with us. Our God is great. We all know that, right? Amen. That was silent. Our God is great. Our God is faithful. He's always faithful. He's always great. Nothing is ever going to change that. If you just turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, from verse 31. Amen. The Word of God instructs us, says, I'm reading from the KJV version, says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith or shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Read that again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient until today, until the day is the evil thereof. What if God says we should take no thought for tomorrow? Don't worry, don't fret. Over anything. I know it sounds simple, but this is the word of God. It says, do not worry about everything. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing, what you will eat, what you will wear, will be added unto you. Amen and amen. So going back to this week, I mean, I was just amazed at the power of God during the solar eclipse. Just two things. There's so much that we can learn from that experience. And it was an experience of God's glory. The Word of God says in Job 9.10, it says that God does great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without number. We saw a wonder in that day with our own eyes. Guaranteed, the Lord instructed that we get special eyes to see. And if you didn't have special eyes, you would not see. But God blessed us. But two things out of that. God's timing is perfect. It was down to the exact second. That was God. His instruction and his timing. He said, get ready. This is coming. He gave man wisdom. 
to spread the word. And I liken it to the word of God that has been preached at every church service. Whereby God gives his instruction. He says, this is, it's coming. It's in his word. The instruction is there. The timing. God's timing is perfect. If he gives you the exact time, it will happen. Just as he said it would. And so we saw God's instruction. We saw his timing come to pass. And we were all there. And at the end of all that, if you're a true believer in God, you would praise. If you're a true believer in God and you saw that with your own eyes, you will praise. It would do something inside of you. And for me, it did. I know for the animals, it did also. It felt like they were confused, angry. But to me, I felt like they were praising God also. Like, what just happened? You mean I don't, I, and I can bet the little kids, the little animal kids were like, you mean I don't have to go to bed now? You know? But this is God. Now, the same God, same God, who has all that power, who created the heavens, the earth, and all that is within, it's the same God that instructs you to give unto the Lord, to bring a tenth into the storehouse, so that there may be food, there may be meat in my house, to seek first his kingdom, to be a kingdom extender with what he has blessed you with. It's the same God. If you were asleep during the solar eclipse, you didn't see nothing. And for some reason, some people probably forgot. Let's not be asleep where God is concerned. Let's not fall asleep where the Lord is concerned. Let's not fall asleep in your giving. It's very easy because there are cares of the world that will come and hit you. But do not take giving unto the Lord for granted. And sometimes, I know a brother very many, many years ago, he's no longer in, um, he no longer worships here. But he was just like, um, we had a conversation. And I was just growing up in the Lord then. And he had a conversation. He's like, you know, all this talk about giving, giving, giving every Sunday. I don't get it. He felt it was too much. You know? But his eyes, there was a veil over his eyes. Don't be one of those people. The reason why we stand here every Sunday telling you, reminding you what the Lord says about tithing, about giving unto him. It's because we know that it's so easy to fall asleep. It's an instruction for the Lord, from the Lord. And God's instructions, they are not optional. He instructs you must do if you want to see. You must do if you want to get, if you want to achieve, if you want to move forward, if you want to elevate the instructions of the Lord, they are just like his promises. They are yes, they are amen. His instruction is followed by promise. So indulge me this, this morning just to just remind you that the Lord does great things past finding out. Thank you so much. The Lord which doeth great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without number. Amen and amen. As we get ready to give this morning, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand so you could get one. And as we prepare our offerings, I just want you to prepare your hearts to bless the Lord and to be grateful. The Word of God says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Please let's rise up on our feet as we give unto the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we just bless your holy name. And we just remember that you are the God who does great things past finding out. You are the God of all wonders. You are the God of all blessings. The word of God says that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Father God, we give back to you out of the abundance, out of the love, out of the favor that you have shown us. Father, without you, we don't have to give. Without you, we don't have a breath in our lungs. Without you, we don't have food on our tables. Father God, we just say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, because you've blessed us, oh God. Your word says, they that honor me, I will honor. Lord, we honor you today.
We honor you with our giving, oh God. We honor you and we trust you for more in every area of our lives. More of you, more of your power, more of your blessings, more of your wisdom, more of your glory in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Receive our offerings. Smile down on us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Please give with joy this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God's ways are indeed past finding out. Amen. So we trust him and we cast all of our cares on him because the Bible says that he cares. He cares for us. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's give God the praise. Hallelujah. I'm trading my sorrow and I'm trading my pain and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Let's sing it together. Trading my sorrow, I'm trading my sorrow, trading my shame, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying it down, it down for the joy of the Lord. Executed, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond a curse. His promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow, though the sorrow may last for a night, joy comes with the morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame.
is always to say yes to the Lord. Amen. Because his ways are what? Past finding out. His thoughts towards you are thoughts of evil. No. They're thoughts of? Good. Yes. To bring us to an expected end. So what is your expectation today? Amen. 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 That's our expectation. Amen. Let's exalt the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah. together. I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my My safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my strength and key, anointed one, most holy. you're with me because you're with me I will not fear Lord because you're with me because you're, you're with me because you're with me I will not fear I will not fear because you're with Because you're with me Because you're with me I will not fear I will not fear You are my hiding place You're my hiding place My safe refuge my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, my friend and king, anointed one. Lord, you are my friend and king, my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. One more time, you are my hiding place, my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord. You are, you're my friend and king, anointed one, 
Hallelujah. Amen. You are our hiding place. Yes, you are our safe refuge, yes, our treasure. That's what you are, oh God. Yes, and we worship you in this sanctuary. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We give you praise, Jesus. Amen. Just lift up your hands and worship the Lord in this place and give him glory. Father, we bless you. What a privilege it is, oh God, to come into your presence to bring our worship, to acknowledge you, to reverence you, our God, because you are holy, you are glorious, you are faithful. You are more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. We are nothing without you, our God. All of our praise, all of our worship, it is to you and to you alone, our God. We bless you. We praise you. Somebody just worship God and give him praise. Give him glory magnify his name exalt the name of the living God magnify the king of kings and the lord of lords lord you are enthroned in this place lord you are enthroned in our hearts oh god we worship you we glorify you we magnify you yes our god receive our praise receive our worship glory to your holy name our god in the name of jesus Father God, we just thank you for this vision. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are the author of this vision. Lord, except the Lord builds a house, the laborers labor in vain. Except you watch over his city, O oh God. Lord, the watchmen, they watch but in vain, our God. Father God, we thank you because you have called us, O oh God, to this vision. You have set us on a path, oh God, in this vision. And we look to you, our God, to order our steps day by day by day, oh God. Order our steps, oh God. Our ears are open, waiting, oh God, on your instructions, our God, in the name of Jesus. We know that you who have called, you are faithful. You will make every necessary provision, oh God, for us to accomplish this vision. So we have no fear, we have no worry, our God, we have no concern. In the name of Jesus, the doors that ought to open, we open of their own accord. You have promised to God in your word, oh God, in your prophetic word to us, that yes, oh God that we will see favor oh God we will receive favor from unusual places oh God Father God in the name of Jesus Christ um, yes oh God we thank you for the uncommon favor oh God yes oh God in the name of Jesus Christ um, thank you for the new doors you are opening the new places oh God you are creating and making for us our God in the name of Jesus we thank you Father God for the work of God you are set to do in Texas Lord we speak a word to it our God your spirit moved upon the earth oh God and then you spoke. Yes, oh God, he hovered over the chaos, hovered over the emptiness. And then you spoke, Father God, in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, oh God. We thank you that you are hovering over Texas right now. Creating the place, oh God. Making the ways, oh God. Creating the paths, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Establishing the partnerships, oh God, that we need in the name of Jesus. Father God, we will not be frustrated, oh God, on this mission. Yes, oh God, we will not be weakened, oh God, or be set back in this mission in the name of Jesus we thank you Father God for the great work you have begun to do oh God out there in Pakistan our God the seed that has been sown our God yes our God we thank you you are watering it by your spirit it is popping up it is coming out oh God yes oh God we see the shoot coming out oh God it is budding it is blossoming our God in the name of Jesus we are taking over communities with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus and there shall be oh God a demonstration of your spirit and your power in that city in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord for the great 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 work you are doing oh God in India in the name of Jesus thank you for ALICC India oh God is blessed and 
prospering our God in the name of Jesus you have given oh God that work a voice in that nation it is breaking beyond barriers oh God and limits in the mighty name of Jesus it is getting the attention oh God of the people that matter oh God and shaking oh God that system by the power of the Holy Ghost we thank you Father God for the great work you are doing out there in Africa oh God through all of our work yes our God in South Africa out there oh God in Nigeria in Nigeria yes oh God in Ghana thank you Jesus for the work in Uganda and Kenya Lord breathe upon it our God it is not limited to that space it is spreading it is spreading all across that continent in the name of Jesus and even beyond in the name of Jesus Lord our God there shall be testimonies oh God of your glory testimonies of your power testimonies of your goodness testimonies oh God of your greatness oh God through that work in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for North Carolina and Columbus our God what a mighty God what a mighty God what a mighty God in the name of Jesus we command doors to open we command doors to open we thank you Lord that your favor is working for us our God in the name of Jesus we thank you Father where men have gone and failed oh God we go forth and we succeed and prosper in the mighty name of Jesus where men have said it is impossible oh God everything oh God is possible for us our God in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord for what you are doing, oh God, right here in Cleveland and out there in Akron in the name of Jesus. Lord our God, we give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. We declare indeed that this place is too small for us, our God. Through the eyes of our faith, oh God, this space is too small for us, our God, in the name of Jesus. Because, our God, you are increasing us spiritually, mentally, emotionally. You are increasing us, our God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Increasing our capacity, oh God, to take territories in your name. In the name of Jesus we thank you we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we thank you Jehovah God we thank you Jehovah God yes oh God your blessing oh God your word declares oh God that the blessing of the Lord it make it rich and he you oh God you do not add sorrow to it we thank you father in the name of Jesus this work is blessed this work is blessed and prospering in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we thank you Father God our yokes are destroyed and burdens are lifted our God we thank you for your holy ease oh God with which this work is done in the name of Jesus thank you Father God for our publications oh God that are blessed oh God every hand oh God everyone that receives our books everyone that hears oh God the word coming from from this place oh God their lives oh God are changed and transformed oh God they are blessed indeed in the name of Jesus the fruit of God from your word of God yes oh God is produced in their lives in the name of Jesus they will not remain the same again we thank you father we give you praise we give you all of the glory we give you all of the honor in the mighty name of Jesus somebody shout hallelujah Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we alive in this house today? Are we alive in the house today? Hallelujah. Let's be seated, please, just for a while before we get our confession. I don't come again, as I was saying. <laughs> I would like us to pray just briefly for Israel. Um, yesterday, a friend sent me a text and said, we're in a, in, a, in a WhatsApp chat group, and he said, Iran don't strike Israel. And I'm like, what's going on? It's not like we're not expecting something like that for those of you who follow the news. But when it happens, you know, sometimes you think you are prepared for certain things. But when it actually happens, you say, it's totally different from what I thought, you know. The thought of war started coming into my mind. The thought of instability in the Middle East and the impact it will have on our lives, you know. Uh, you might be feeling very comfortable where you are, but you don't know what a war in the Middle East will mean. You know, it's, it's biblical that there will be the, uh, the war of Armageddon. It's going to happen in, in Israel. We don't know when. For the Bible scholars or who are like the sons of Issachar who understand the times. We don't know yet when. 
But just the thought of war, it's not a good thing. Just the thought of war. That place has been in unrest now for the past six months. Since November, uh, October 7th. When you know the wild and vile things that were made there. And we know what has ensued since then. Record says about 30, t- over 30,000 people have died. And majority are the children and the w- women. We don't even have a, anything to do with this thing. And I would just like us to pray for Israel and pray for that Middle East and ask God's hand to rest on it. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his agenda. That's his way of operating. But God has come to give us life and to give us life in abundance. We pray that God, you stretch your hand in Israel. That region, Father, that stability will prevail. That the warmongers will be disappointed, Lord. All those who wish that there be an escalation for some way will benefit from this escalation. All those who wish will be disappointed because the hand of God will prevail. The will of God will prevail. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we speak peace in that region. We say the peace of God would hover around that area and bring all this war to an end. This hunger, this, this despair, this death. Oh, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bring into attention all the, 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 the spirits of war that are hovering around the Middle East. We speak the word of God. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Father, you have given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to overcome all the powers of the enemy. You have said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities. We see what is happening in the Middle East as the work of principalities, Lord. The work of powers. We expose them and bring them to shame. We say there will be peace in that region. That as people wonder what Israel is going to do, God will prevail in Jesus' name. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. May your peace reign in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, let's stand up and get a a confession for 2024. Praise the Lord. I think you will see it on the overhead there. Okay. One, two, three, go. 2024, my year of God class exploits and the year of the fourth man. I am God's offspring and in him I live and move and have my being. I am no ordinary or natural person. I am a supernatural, extraordinary being born of the seed of God himself. I have the seed of God in me. I produce after God's seed and I overcome the world. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. I am the light of the world and the salt of the earth. I represent Jesus. I speak for Jesus. I stand for Jesus. I reign with Jesus. The fourth man will be with me in the fire. What happens to ordinary people may happen to me, but I will have supernatural outcomes. The fourth man has made me a god to the natural elements of this world. Situations ordinary people cannot survive will become my stepping stones to glory testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. The king's shout is within me, and the lion's roar is rolling out of me. I raise the roof with my praise. I cry out and shout for joy. The greatest one lives here. I am feeding and reigning at a higher level. I have spiritual jurisdiction here. I take authority over this. Peace be still in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. 
Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. This is my year of covenant release. I am under cover. No satanic plan against me. No divination against my household will ever prevail. In due season, and even now, the world will proclaim what wonders God has done for them. I am shielded and protected from every misfortune. I am under cover. The evil viper released into the world in these last days will not touch me. I am under cover. I am inoculated and vaccinated with a booster shot of the covenant. I am under cover. I am prospered, protected, and preserved in the ark. I am under cover. I shall take the viper into the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Satan. The blood of Jesus is against you. I am under cover in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 2024 is my year of uncommon provision. I am blessed in all things. Jehovah Jireh will see to it. I am finding favor in unexpected places. And I see the ram caught in a ticket. The barrel of meal shall not waste. And the cruise of oil shall not fail until the Lord sends rain upon the earth. God is sending rain on my field, and there shall be showers of blessings. I am one with God, and I possess what God possesses. I have the spirit of adoption. He is my father, and I am a joint heir with Christ. I have real estate in heaven, and I have real estate on the earth. I lift my hand up to El Elyon, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. My God has made me rich. This will be a year of broken boundaries and unlimited reach. The boundaries are broken and the limits are off. See, God has given me the cities and the walls of Jericho are fallen. Hallelujah. Humanly speaking, it is impossible but not with God. For with God, all things, everything is possible. Kermit Bikundu, I prophesy over you today. Your dwellings are lovely. Your homes are beautiful. You will spread out like rivers, like gardens by a river, like sweet-smelling aloes that the Lord himself planted, and like strong cedar trees by the waters. You will pour water out of your own buckets and have your own channels of rich blessing and plenty. Your offspring will dwell by many waters and your life and legacy will be exalted and established. The God who brought you out of captivity has the strength of a wild bull and he will destroy your adversaries and crush their bones. You are like a lion who couches in rest after winning the victory. And who dares disturb you? Blessed of the Lord is anyone who blesses you. And you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 2024 is my year of God-class exploits. And this is the year of the fourth man. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Never get old. Never gets old. That confession is powerful. Can we please sit down? That confession is powerful. And if you have not been enjoying it, reading it, claiming it for yourself, I beg you to do so. And you will not regret it. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I have just come here to just reinforce certain things that we've been doing God has been blessing us through as senior pastor the past weeks. You know, I know who I am. I am born of God. And uh, this morning, I have entitled the message, the short message I have, What do you know? What do you know? We are in a world today where information is saturated. There is no way you want to know something and you will not be able to know it. Data, 
Some call it big data for those of you who are in IT. Data has become big, a very big part in every life, aspect of our lives. For those of you who even have Apple phones, the moment you get, when I get out of my house, I just see a notification, 50 minutes to work. 50 minutes. So it knows that Monday through Friday, when I get, up in the, get out of the house at 7.30, I am going to work. How does it know? It has collected my habits. It is a data in the system. Big data. What do you know? It's a challenge this morning. And so I would like us to go to Colossians, the book of Colossians. Please, can we go to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, from verse 27. And I want it in the message. I don't know why I've fallen in love with the with the message translation. It is uh, it's something to behold. It's really good. Some of us who are old King James people, <laughs> thou and they. This is not the time for thou and they. Let's put it aside. The message has something here for us I want, I want to capture for us this morning. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out. Hallelujah. To know it inside and out. Meaning that there should be no doubt in who you are, in the knowledge that you have. Tomorrow you stand before kings and priests or, you know, governments. And they ask you of your, your faith. You should be able to tell them what you know. Regardless, and he says, regardless of their background, regardless of their religious standing, the mystery in a nutshell is just this. The mystery. Meaning that it is time for us to understand that which has been hidden for a long time, that which has been a mystery, that mystery is just this. Christ is in you. Therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. The mystery in a nutshell is just this. Christ is in you. You can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It is that simple. Praise the Lord. It is that simple. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's very simple. And because it is very simple, that's why the wise in the world don't understand it. They despise it. That's why the, 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 the rich people who come in the night and ask Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus will give them a simple answer. You must be born again. This morning, I want to ask you, what do you know? Do you know that Jesus Christ in you, it's a simple knowledge, simple thing, that grants you access to the glory, the life of God. Simple. If we look at Mark chapter 11, when Jesus Christ sent his disciples, I don't know if you can pull that. I think it's from, from 11. Mark chapter 11 from 11. When Jesus Christ told his disciples, go and get this donkey for me. Before that, let's, let's bring it from verse, from verse 1. Let me see. The Bible says, when, it, when they were nearing Jerusalem at Belfast and Bethany on Mount Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. With instructions. Look at the instruction. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a cult tethered. One that has never yet been ill ridden. Untie it and bring it. Now look at this. Three. Say, if anyone asks, what are you doing? Say, the master needs him and will return him right away. Jesus Christ does not borrow and does not fulfill his, does not pay back. Oh, yeah, that's, some people will say, oh, how can Jesus just take somebody's donkey? 
But it says the master needs him and will return him right away. Now let's go to four. It says they went and found a call tied to a door at the street corner and untied it. Five. Some of those standing there said, what are you doing? Untying that cord. Is it yours? You are not the owner. This cord, we know this cord. This is a cord not like any ordinary cord. We know that the man who owns this cord has never used it. And we are kind of puzzled. Why? And you just come from nowhere. You want to untie it. The risk that the disciples even took to go and untie something that is not theirs. That risk in Africa, yes, in Africa, that no, they will land on you and you will understand. But they went because the master sent them. They did not question, it was simple, it's very simple. Just go and do as I say. And six, the disciples replied exactly. I want us to underline that word. The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them. Praise the Lord. The disciples did not reinvent the wheel. The gospel should not be reinvented in these days. The gospel is simple and that's it. Simple. When they went there and they asked them, why are you untying this? Today, some people will say, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Do you know who sent us? The person who said, you have never heard of Jesus. The one who walked on the water. He fed 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. You have never heard of the one who resurrected Nazareth, a Lazarus from the dead, after four days? He is the one who sent us. I am telling you, those people would have said, uh huh. If he, if he has the capacity to feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, why can he not go and get his own donkey? Praise the Lord. Jesus just gave them one instruction. And they went and did it exactly as he said. They did not reinvent the wheel. The wheel was not reinvented. We are in the days where people want to reinvent the wheel. Where the message of, the simple message of the gospel has been made to be very complicated. So complicated that you ask yourself, what is going on? I don't know, there is one preacher in, let me just say Africa, who has become so popular in these days, and he is telling people, the level of my power is here. I have not started even operating at this other level. And he gave some kind of names. You know, making a mockery of the word of God and the power of God. The gospel of Jesus is so simple. The gospel that Jesus has is so simple. If you obey it, just as God has said it, you will reap the benefits. You will not... You see, Jesus knew that if he just gave them this instruction, the people will not want to... Because it's limited, limited knowledge. The knowledge is limited. The master has sent us... And you begin to ask yourself, the master? Is it the man who owns the donkey? Who is this master? Anyway, I don't want me to just go. Take it and go. And they went. What do you know? In the Bible, God has always given his instructions. Very simple and detailed. He asked Noah to build the ark with specific instructions. There was a reason why. 
And Noah went, the Bible says Noah went and built the ark according to the specifications that God gave him. But uh, on the other hand, there are people in the Bible where God had instructed them to do something and they did it the other way. Or maybe wanted to overdo it. And they got the consequences. Example, pointing, Moses. Remember when Moses, God told Moses, speak to the rock. And water will come out. Moses wanted to overdo it. What did he do? In anger, he hit that rock. And, 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 and that was... That was what made him not to inherit, not to even get into the promised land. The land which he was, the land which he was made. Moses was born, and the day, the first day the mother saw him. The Bible says the mother saw that this, this child was beautiful. This child had something in him. This, as, as the pastor has been telling us the, 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 the past weeks, the mother spoke into the, Moses, telling him, You are special. You might be in Egypt, in, in, in Pharaoh's palace, but you have a task. You have something. That was the purpose for which God brought Moses to this world. It was to take the children of Israel into the promised land. Moses was not brought to see the promised land. He was brought to take the children of Israel into the promised land. It was such a big task in such a way that when even Moses gave Joshua that handed the keys to Joshua, the reign to Joshua, Joshua was scared. You remember in Joshua 1.8, he was scared. He said, look, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you want to follow me, follow me. Because I know who you are. You are a hot-headed people. It is because of you that Moses has not entered the promised land. You hot-headed people. For 40 years, you roamed the desert. And as pastor said, for 40 years, all those who even were there when Moses wanted to reinvent the wheel again. Remember when he went and met these two Israelites who were arguing and fighting amongst themselves. And he, he was, why are you fighting amongst your, you are brothers, you're not supposed to fight. And they said, who made you the ruler or judge over us? They said it because it was not his time. Forty years later, when he came, he came with an anointing, an authority. Because you remember before he came, he asked God, if I go there, they will ask me who has sent me. And God said, I am that I am. And so when he came, he came with that anointing. He came with that that authority. So when he was speaking, people could listen. What do we know? Knowing who Christ is in you and knowing who you are in Christ will make you a champion that can never be defeated on this earth. Knowledge. Jesus wants us to know him these last days. Out there, we have a lot of people trying to make us doubt who we are. You know, they want to make some people doubt that God called them to be men or to be women. They want you to doubt it. There's a lot of doubt in the air. A lot of doubt. Because when you start doubting, there is no power. There is no authority. Where do you stand to speak? On what authority do you stand to speak? So knowing who Christ is in you and knowing who you are in Christ will make you a champion that can never be defeated on this earth. That can never be defeated on this earth. I begin to ask myself when Jesus asked, why did Jesus ask that the disciples go and bring him a colt, a donkey that had never been ridden on? Nobody had ever put. So I said, let me, let me do some research about donkeys. If you go and research about donkeys, you will understand that donkeys are very loyal. They are loyal to their master. Very loyal. And so if a donkey knows that you are their master, it will obey you 
They say the donkey is ter very territorial. That's what they, what they use about donkey in, in, in Wikipedia. They are very territorial. They, they don't like t trouble. Peaceful. They don't like, you remember in the, it's, it's Balak or Balaam. Remember, the donkey told, what did the donkey tell him? He said, look, for these years, I've been with you. For all these years, you have said, turn like this. I turned. You said, turn like this. I turned. Now you want me to go and I stop. You could not even ask yourself, this donkey, donkeys, what is happening? Something might be wrong somewhere. Amen? Something, so understanding your environment, understanding the things that happen around you. Our brother was talking about the eclipse. We saw it. It was a, a, a wonderful sight to behold. It was those five minutes. My wife was just praising God, and I was like, ah, now nah, wow. The works of your hand, I'm just praising. I have it on tape. <laughs> I say, look, <laughs> like, like our brother said, they had, God has given wisdom to man. And man said, at 3.13, it will start. And it will be for five minutes. And we started sitting, we started sitting around 2.55. And looking, they were like, what is happening here? We are not seeing, no. I said, relax. They have said it will come. What you are seeing like that, it's reducing bit by bit. bit by. They said, we know this year, Mo, around 3.10. They said, oh, yes. It has become smaller. Uh -uh. And then it covered around the beauty of it. You know, at 3.13. It, you see... That is it. Knowledge. Knowledge. At 3.15, 35 seconds. At 3.13, 35 seconds. It started. The beauty of the eclipse. And I began to wonder, how can I apply this in my life? An eclipse. A, an eclipse for five minutes. The change of the normal. The status quo, how people see things or want things to be done. God says for five minutes, I will show you that I can control. And some people paid. Somebody said, I, I booked this hotel last year. One year to come and view it. The, the, the beauty of God. So the donkey told him, I have not I am seeing something. There is something wrong in front of me. There is, there is a man with a sword. I don't know this. I've never, a donkey even, it pushed the donkey to talk. Donkeys don't talk. They don't. And so Jesus said, go and bring, bring me a donkey that has not been subjected to the rule and, of any man. That has not been controlled. Their loyalty has not been given to another man. Because when I will ride on this donkey, I will be the king. I will enter Jerusalem. Because Jesus already knew. They were waiting for him in Jerusalem. How can I enter into Jerusalem? This donkey, maybe the friends were telling him, ah, you, no man no one take you. Why is the master not even, not even selling you? You are missing out. You know, we went, you know where my master took me today? You don't know. I went to this. The donkey was there. The donkey did not know. But on that day, that donkey had the king of kings on him. Amen? The king of kings. The unadulterated donkey. The donkey that had not been controlled by man. Jesus was controlling him. That is how our life is in Christ. Simple. Simple. The donkey went simple. Uh -uh. Is this how outside is? People are just putting things and I can walk on. <laughs> if I understood what animals and how animals speak, I would have been, I would have been amazed to just sit that and see what that donkey will say when, it, when they went and gave him back. He said today was, <laughs> you guys have been missing. What you have been saying, no, your master took you maybe to that bar or to that, no, to see that uncle. Or, no, where I went, 
You don't know. Where I went, there was noise. And that noise, you just my big ears. And that noise, I took it off and my blood was cold. The heat, I could not feel it. No, this is not a lie. The donkeys, the, the, the Wikipedia says donkeys have big ears for a reason. The big ears, the sound. Sound makes their blood to be cold. And so in a very hot region, like in the desert, when there is a lot of noise, it's good for them. Imagine this donkey riding on Jesus. And people are shouting, Hosanna in the highest. There was noise that day in Jerusalem. This donkey was feeling so wonderful. I cannot feel the heat. Am I even carrying somebody? I am just one. He was just going. He was just going. Praise the Lord. That is what Jesus has called us. Simple. Can you put Colossians 1.27 again? Simple. It's just simple. We are not called to reinvent the wheel. We are called to reinforce the truth. We are not called to reinvent the wheel. Christ is in you. Therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It's that simple. That is the substance of our message. It is why we are. That is why we live. It is not deciphering the messages in the Bible, trying to think what they are, what they meant. No, it's just simple. That Christ is in you, we share the glory of God. You see, that's why I say this uh, uh, confession is so wonderful. Because, it, you see, it, it tells you, I am, I am. A lot of, I am there, I am one with God, I am this, I am, I am this. I have, I have the spirit of adoption. I have real estate in heaven. I, you know, this will be a year of broken boundaries and unlimited reach. We are going to have unbroken boundaries and unlimited reach if we make our lives simple. You have to know this, please, this year. Don't complicate your life. Jesus Christ likes, has given us a simple, simple life. The script is simple. It's a very simple script. You know? You know? You know, if you read, if you read the Genesis and Jacob, the story of Jacob is one that intrigues me because he has a lot of, he has a lot of things the life of Jacob is that one, that life which when you, when you read it and study it, you, you, you see how God intervenes in a man's life, even though that man, you know, if you look how when Jacob had this encounter with, with, with God in Genesis chapter 32 or 28, I think, when, when Jacob had this encounter with God, when he was going back to, to Canaan, when he was going back, he had this encounter with God, and God said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, that's the old. I'm giving you a new name, Israel. That's why today people, some people will judge and mock Israel and wish death to Israel. Because knowledge, they don't know. Because they don't know. God said, your name is Israel. You are going to be blessed. That land. You know, before he went to Laban and he had this vision, when he woke up, he put that stone in remembrance. What did he say? He said he will give God one tenth of whatever, whatever he has. And this place he called it Bethel because God is here. He called it Bethel. But when he, he came back, there was fear in his heart. Because even though God had promised him all this wonderful thing that is, he's going to possess the land, he's going to be a prosperous man. And even though he had also made this, this promise to God that if God brings him back, you know, he was going to come and raise an altar in that place. He was still afraid of his brother Esau. And the Bible tells us that, you know, calculate. Jacob is one of those people who, 
if you look at his, 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 his history, his life, he was very careful, meticulous, and calculative. Very. And I had shared once here that when, when he wanted to go and meet his, his brother, he made sure he sent his servants first with gifts. In Haiti, we call that denial of service. So you flood. What he was doing he was, was flooding. Flooding because the Bible says Esau came with 400 men. You think he came with 400 men to just greet his brother? No. The same reason why Jacob left and went to Laban was that the mother heard that Esau was planning to kill Jacob. Jacob knew that I am going to Laban because my brother wants to kill me. And it was ringing in his head when he was coming back. He was, he's like, I am going back to the same man who had promised to kill me. 400 men Esau was coming with. And Jacob said, I'm going to give you a denial of action. I'm going to show you blessings. And so he lobbied and sent people, servants. You first go with this 200 sheep. You, when he wants to, over, you flood him again with this 250 goats. And then, then he wants to think, you flood him again. It was in steps. A very smart man. It was God just telling him, you know, it was, and when I read it, I read it and I'm like, oh, this man. And then he left and he said, this is not all. What I want us to, to, to get here is, when he sent his wives and his kids over the brook, the Bible says he remained behind and he wrestled with somebody. He wrestled with God. And in wrestling with God the whole night, can you imagine? I did not ask you anything, Siri. You're interrupting. <laughs> so, he wrestled with God. The Bible says all night he wrestled with God. And then God wanted to go. The man, he said, no, you're not going home. Jacob, his fight with Esau was triggered by the mother, not him. True? It is the mother who heard that Isaac wanted to bless Jacob. I mean, Esau. Jacob, his fight with Laban was triggered by Laban. It is Laban who made, I gave him Leah instead of Rachel. But this fight, it was Jacob. This is the first time Jacob fought. And he fought with God. And he prevailed. Because when he finished, they asked him, what is your name? Jacob. And the angel said, you have fought with man and with God and you have prevailed. Your name is Israel right now. You, will be, you have prevailed. You have encountered God. You have wrestled with God. God has given you a new name, simple, Israel. And the Bible says, even though they gave him a sign, you know, when he was, he was limping, that morning, he went and met his brother without fear. He went and met his brother because he had prevailed the night before. He had wrestled with God. God had wrestled and God had told him that, look, you have won with man and with God. You have won. So whatever you see us out there, whatever you think he will do, know that it has been taken care of. It has been settled. And the Bible says when he saw Esau, Esau wept. Esau kissed him and Esau wept. You know? Esau kissed him, and Esau wept. With 400 men coming to take the life of his brother, he came and kissed his brother instead. Why? Because the brother encountered God, prevailed with God. The brother decided to take time apart, to tell the family, go. There is serious business here. And in this business, I don't need people to be around because the fight will be fierce. 
And so there is time in your lives when you go through things and you sit back and say, you know what? I think I have to take some time. Maybe to, to fast. Maybe to pray. Because what is ahead of me is tough. Jacob understood this. And so he encountered God and he wrestled with God. And he told God, you will not go unless you bless me. That is what we have been called to. A simple life which knows when to do what and where, where to do what. With all the activities that we have, if things are coming in your life, in your family, and you sense that there is something that is a pattern, you say, no, this is not supposed to be. A pattern that is against, it's not a pattern of blessing. We need to have a pattern of blessing. Meaning that when people see us and things happen to us, they are like, what do you expect? It's always like that. They are just blessed. His things just go, you know, he, he, there is no stress with him. He's like Joseph, wherever he went. You remember? He was just blessed. He was just up, up there. In prison, he was up. The servant, somebody who was sold as a slave became a, a boss. You know, he said, he said your master, your husband has there, everything in this house. Your husband has given under me. You I cannot touch. You know. When we have those patterns in our lives that are not in line with the blessings of God, it is time for us to retreat and to wrestle with God. It is time for us to say, no, this pattern will not prevail in my family. Okay? You see, you see it, it says that the things that happen to people, they're ordinary. What happens to ordinary people may happen to me, but I will have supernatural outcomes. Hallelujah. I will have supernatural outcomes. You know? Put it in your mind and determine that, look, I know that this is, we are, we are in a, a four-season nation where each season comes with its own stuff hidden in it. In the fall, there is flu, you know, and all these things that happen. Anything that is, is not blessing, it's not a blessing, determine in your heart that, look, I will not be part of it. It's not going to cross my household. Amen? Determine in your life, in your heart, like Jacob, Jacob saw danger. He cried. He said, look, God, you are the one who said you will bless me. Remember? You said my offspring will be blessed. I see Esau coming. He's coming to end me. He was desperate. And so he came and had this encounter with God. We should be, we should be like Jacob. We should be desperate in our dealings with God. We should wrestle with God and tell God this is what we want. Amen? That is where we get our life. That is where we share with the glory. We have been adopted. So we have to share God's glory. We should not, we have been fooled for too long to think that the ordinary things that happen to normal people, we should have the same outcome as them. No, our outcome should be supernatural. Because out there, everybody just wants, you know, everybody wants to gain. Everybody wants to use you. You know, like I, my brother, I have my brother who is here from South Africa. Praise the Lord. As my brother, he, he, he said, I want to go to my, let me go to my brother. I'm not seen. He left, he left Cameroon 2009. 2009. The same year I left. I have not seen him since. He said, they gave me a holiday. I want to come and spend with you. I said, come, my brother, Come. And so he's here. He has been with us for two weeks. Yeah, wonderful. It, was one, it has been wonderful having him around. But when he landed in America, 
and he was looking for a cab, taxi or Uber to take him. I was in church here last Sunday, uh, two Sundays ago. The pastor was preaching. And he called. I told him I'm in service. So, you know, the, the message the pastor was preaching, I, I did not want to, I did not want to miss. So I just told him that look for an Uber, you know. And he went, he said, okay. He went out and he met this guy, this guy. And the guy said, wait, where are you going? So I'm going to the other, it's Reagan, Reagan uh, Airport. He was in Dallas. So he wanted to go to Reagan to take the local flight to come here. And this guy sees him and says, oh yeah, I am. I'll take you, go. I'll take you there, let's go. And he asked the guy, how much is it? The guy said, $100. He doesn't know, right? He doesn't know that that is too much. I am an Uber driver. I drive Uber. So he called and he tells me, hey, this guy has said it is $100. I, I did not want to start arguing. I just wanted him to go, settle, and I come back to the, and, and follow my message. I say, go. And the funny thing was, the guy was from where? From the same country, Cameroon. And I'm like, this guy, your own countryman. <laughs> Why now? Why would you see your brother and you want to use him? Why would you do that? You know, I say, you know, sometimes some people don't know what happens to them. Certain things happen to people and you are like, why is it happening? You don't know what they have done. You don't know what they have done. You don't know, you don't know what they've opened, those doors they've opened. You know, you don't know. Because as believers, we have a lien on our lives. A lien in, 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 in contract. If you go like you have a mortgage, I don't know if you know what a lien is, L-I-E-N. If you go and you have a mortgage or you pay a car note, a lien works mainly for car notes. When you go and get a, a car note from a, from a banking financial institution, what the financial institution does is it gives the dealership money and takes your title and registers, registers it on the lien website. There's a registry called Lien that says, I have authority over this car. So at any point in time, I can go and take this car if this man does not fulfill his commitments. As believers, we have a Lien in our lives. And that Lien was bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so when we go out there and we are walking and the devil wants to encounter, just tell the devil, I don't have title to my life. That title was purchased. Amen? That title has been purchased. If you can go and redeem it from the owner and come and do what you want to do. But as long as you don't have that lien on my life, I walk on victory land. Hallelujah. It is that simple. And it's a spiritual rule that the devil respects. Because he even told God, you have surrounded Job with all these blessings. You have this lien on him. How will he not serve you? And God said, you think so? Okay, let me remove the lien. Touch him. But don't kill him. Because his life belongs to me. We have a lien on our life. And that lien was bought by the blood of Jesus. And so if we understand this thing, there is nothing that will cause us to shake. There is no boast from demons. There is no situation that will come our way and that we will not be able to say, oh, okay, I see, it's coming. I think it's time to get you to the closet, time for some, time for some uh, wrestling with God. Hey, Father, this thing is here. What's going on? And you wrestle with God and wrestle with God. And you come out victorious. Because God is the one who has that lien over our lives. God has bought our life. You know, the Bible says we have been bought with a price. We are hid with him in Christ. Colossians 3.3, 3, I think. Can we have that, please? Let's read Colossians 3.3. 3. We'll end with Colossians 3.3. 3. We'll end with Colossians 3.3. 3. 
Oh, let's, let's start from one. Okay, yeah. Let's start from there. For ye are dead. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen? That's some layer of hiding. It's a powerful layer of hiding. Your, your life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. It's some layer of hiding. Nobody can touch you. Go to four. Let's see. When Christ, who is alive, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Five. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil occup- con- concupiscence. Oh my goodness. Concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. We have been called out of the world. We have been called to live lives. Holy lives. Righteous lives. We don't live like the world lives. Our frequency is different. Amen? God's frequency is that which we live on. It means that if you are not on the same frequency like I am, when I do things you might never understand. Until somebody who knows that has my same frequency will be able to say, ah, this is what's going on. And just thank God. Amen? Sometimes we go through things and some people look at it and they will tell you, hmm, I see what's going on here. They understand it because they are on the same frequency. There was a time that people were dying in my family and I'll tell, I'll tell the pastor, the pastor said, hmm, Kenny, take some time and pray for your family. Something ain't right. My grandfather died. My uncle died. My aunt died. This one died. My, my sister's son was shot. I'm like, oh God, what is going on? There must be an end to this. We have to stand as a, uh, uh, you know, we have to take authority. We have to put an end to this. We have been hid with Christ in God. You should know that today. You have a layer of hiding. A layer of hiding. And that layer is sealed with a lien, the blood of Jesus. Because there is no way Satan will go and die to redeem you. The death of the cross, that death of the cross, is the death that shocked heaven. It shocked heaven. Even Jesus cried out and said, Father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It is death that shocked heaven. And so the price that was paid is that same price that God has used to buy us, to put us. Nobody can break it. Hallelujah. Nothing can break it. I am hid in Christ, with Christ in God. So if you can touch God, then I am at your mercy. But I know that you cannot touch God. Praise the Lord. I know that you cannot touch God. That is what I know. I know that I am with Christ in God and you cannot touch God. I know that my life has a lien on it and that lien, the the owner is God. You cannot touch me. You cannot touch me. And the day I face anything that is contrary to that which God has for me, oh, I have weapons you cannot imagine. I have weapons you cannot imagine. Like that, my friend said, oh, Kemi, Iran has, is striking Israel. I said, has, has it touched Israel yet? Has it? I said, but why are you complicating things now? I said, Iran has, I said, has it touched Israel? Where is it? And somebody said, oh, yeah, it is over Iraq. I said, ah, ah, it is still over Iraq. When it touches Israel, you tell me. 
And this morning when I was browsing over the news, they said, air supremacy. All these drones were struck down. That's a life. In Christ, when the devil comes, we are waiting for him. Hallelujah. Because we have spiritual air supremacy. Spiritual air supremacy. We do not have the, how do they call it, the dome. The Israelites, they have a dome, you know. And they have there in their cities. When, when these rockets come, the dome just puff, push it down. We have the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. God has given us a lien and has given us weapons to pull down anything that exalted itself in our lives against God. God has given us that power to pull it down. Whatever you are going through, you have the power in your hands to pull it down. You should know this today. This knowledge is what the devil does not want us to know. The devil is fighting a war against knowledge because he knows that the what you know is very important. What you know is very important. That is the key. What do you know? Ask yourself, do you know? Praise the Lord. This morning, that is what God had for us. Knowledge. What do we know? We should go and face this world. Go and face the weak. Go and face this year with the knowledge that we are hid with Christ in God. And it is simple. Let's stand up, please. Know this. Don't allow the devil to just toast you left and right. Don't do that. The devil is afraid. The greatest fear that the devil has is believers who just know the simple truth that we are with Christ hid in God. And that we have a lien on our lives which that lien the, the, the owner is God. And so there's nothing that will come and happen to us without God giving permission. And God will not. God will not. God has called us to a life of plenty. He has called us to a life of happiness. He has called us to enjoy. God has not called us to a life of pain. God has not. We go through pain, but we learn through this pain. Amen? What do you know? Do you know these things? Do you know these things? Moses taught because he grew up in, Israel, in, 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 the, in, in Pharaoh's palace. He could kill somebody and put hide on and hide in, in the sun and, and the Israelites would be happy. But he did not know the plan of God. What do you know? What do you know who you are in God? It's simple. We should not reinvent it. We should not reinvent the gospel. The gospel is simple. It is Jesus Christ in us. It's simple. It is a life that has surrendered to Jesus. It's a life that has said, look, my life is linked to God. I have Jesus in me. That day when I took that decision to say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. That day, I granted the key to my life to God. God had the lien on my life. And so God gave me all his characteristics. God gave me all his characteristics. God had, has me share his glory. What do we know? What do you know? Praise the Lord.
we give glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to come back here on Sunday next week. And we have Bible study on Wednesday. Uh, we should tune into Bible studies. A senior pastor will be ministering. Sunday we are back here. Praise the Lord. We we'll have a wonderful week. We enjoy the week. All the good things that God has for us this week is ours. Amen. Amen. Can we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful week, brethren. Amen.